thank you very much once again i welcome all of you for this digital forensic essentials course this is from ec council and i'm dr mohammed ibrahim i'm a certified ec council instructor and also certified ethical hacker um i'm very happy to run this course as part of you know sharing this knowledge with all of you in fact ec council has given this uh, curriculum uh, documents um, in their site as well so you can go and check it it is available for you um after this what we are going to do this digital forensic essential we also have something like ethical hacking yes essential network essential those document also will be shared to you in the coming days so if you are someone who are trying to build your career in cyber security uh, so this bundle uh, will cover all of them like ethical hacking network def you know um, security basics and then computer forensics that's something which will help you to understand and then start your career uh, as a cyber in, in cyber security uh, and a career path okay um, fine so what is the objective of this model last model we saw the importance of uh, digital forensic but now we are going to dive into that right get into the next step and i'm also going to show some of the labs in this uh, towards the end so you like how uh, they do investigations and uh, the forensic computer investigations um, so what we are going to talk today is about forensic in investigation process and its importance and also we are going to look into three different phases we call it pre investigation phase an investigation phase and then post investigation phase so there are three main phases in investigation so this just to prepare your mindset so if i am going to work in forensic you know what is the step 1 step 2 step 3 or what are the different phases of investigation that's what we are going to uh, understand are you ready all of you yeah i'm not you know seeing lot of uh, messages at least you type it in yeah thank you so i can see that you are ready very good um, wonderful so let us start this now let us get into that so importance of forensic investigation process and then pre investigation investigation post investigation this is what we are going to talk about so what is the forensic investigation process it's like obviously we know many many a time when uh, you are exposed you are you are witnessing some crime i'm talking about not cyber crime the physical crime or any uh, crime the police come and they start the investigation process that is the first thing before they lodge anyone as a victim or anyone as a you know is a criminal uh, they want to make sure that you know the investigation process starts using different means like fir and other things or they come to the uh, location and they start you know um, they they witness the problem and they come and start investigation right? so forensic investigation process is nothing but it is an approach so where uh, you want to investigate and also collect or seize and analyze digital evidence okay because now there is some kind of incident happen already you know, somebody has been murdered somebody has been robbed somebody has been kicked out what whatever it could be or there could be someone broke into a home okay so incident has happened now they are coming and analyzing you know how it happened why it happened and who has done it same way in in uh, cyber forensic investigation we talk about digital evidence to analyze digital evidence right and then we want to form a case out of it because i i went and asked and i also able to collect information then i analyze the information to make sure the evidence is correct then i manage the case from the time of search and 
Caesar to reporting the investigation result. So once I collect everything, then I need to make sure, uh, is it something relevant? It's something uh, I need to, you know, report. Somebody's So that is something which is very important in investigation. So let us get into, um, so it will till they finalize the report um, with the investigation result. These are all considered as a forensic investigation process. So can you all just type it in the chat box? What are the main three elements? It, it is a methodological approach for investigation, seizing the information and analyzing the digital evidence. These are the main three points which is involved in the forensic investigation. So now let us understand the importance of this process. Why we, need to, why we should do investigation. Even without investigation, we will file and uh, take them to court, but it may not, you know, it may not be possible to prove the case against him. So the more you spend time in the investigation process and create proper report with all the evidences, then you have better possibility, the more possibility for you to win the case. Do you all agree with that? Instead of going and just telling, okay, this guy did one, two, three, the court will definitely ask for that evidence. So it is our duty to make sure that as much as information collected, documented, so when we go, go to the court, we are able to we are able to uh, prove with much confidence. All right? So that is what we are going to do with this. The second one, so what are the reasons? So we want to make sure it follows the strict guidelines right? and thorough forensic investigation process. Why? Because the integrity of the evidence. For example, I may collect in the crime location. I'm talking about uh, you know murder or any other location. I may go and find, you, you might have seen when such kind of events happen, incident happens, the police, first of all, go and one, the moment they enter the location, they seize the location, all right? They mark up the entire location to make sure nobody gets in because some people may come and uh, change the uh, forensic evidence. They may try to alter it. So first things what they, they seize the location. They bring that location under their control. Why? Because when they take any uh, evidence, they want to make sure that it's not tampered it is not altered. So the first thing in the investigation process is to make sure the integrity of the evidence. Nobody has changed anything. So we are going to do a lab today to check how you can check integrity of a particular evidence and when, especially on the digital evidence. When you have a file, how can I make sure this file is not changed? It is the original file, right? That is something that, so if I can make sure, yeah, this is the same file, it's original file, that means it is, I am ensuring the integrity of that evidence. Is that right? That is very critical to prove a case in the court of law. That is the first point. Second one is what? We need to follow the process because I should comply with the government law, legal law. And also we want to make sure we are following the established, established precedents. So you are going to the home, for example, if, if the police comes without any FIR, or we come just like that, get into a ro room and ride, so it, it is not possible, you know, unless they've done something, they have used some other special criminal act. They need to notify you, they need to tell you, they need to follow a procedure. Even if they have to seize your mobile phone, your laptop, you know, that should be informed that some it is against your personal uh, privacy. 
So we need to make sure whatever, even when we do investigation, we are also following and complying the local laws and established precedents. Because any breach or deviation from that may jeopardize the complete investigation because they can immediately tell this guy came and assaulted me. He came and did this one, two, three without my permission. So you can go, the, the case can turn against you. We might, might have seen many you know, incidents, you, you want to collect, you want to go and spy on someone as a, uh, or go and collect information from the government or from a police officer, and you go and do that, but you may do some mistake which they can take you, take against you, right? So it's always you need to follow the process. That is very important. The third one is it has to follow, it must follow a repeatable and well-documented set of steps. So it cannot be like one time I do, then when somebody asks, okay, can you bring again the evidence? Can you do, how did you, uh, can you show me how did you do? You know, no, no, I went that time, this was okay, but I cannot repeat, no. The process should be such a way that it should be repeatable. And also there is a set of steps so that every iteration of analysis provides the same finding. So I have a tool to find the integrity of the file. So I run the tool, I find there is a, a hash key or MD5, you know. Let us say it's giving me hash checksum. So I'm running the file again. What should happen? It should give me the same result. It not give me a different result, right? So it is important that the more, irrespective of how many times they ask you, when they want to, uh, every iteration I'm doing, you know, during the analysis should provide the same finding. Else the finding of investigation can be invalidated uh, you know, during the cross examination in the court of law. They will say, okay, how did you produce? Show me. That time you are not able to show, they may say that this is mean fake. You are just coming in. So now the importance of the process means it's not about investigation itself, but the process you follow. Are you able to follow all of you? Please type a thumbs up. You just I want to make sure this is very, very fundamental, but I want you to understand this, you know, because without understanding the concept, doing labs, getting into that, jumping into the process, it will not help you in the long term. Because when you are following some tools or steps, uh, techniques, you know why I am doing that has to be, you know, the why has to be sound and that has to be understood through such kind of theoretical knowledge, right? Okay, that's good. Fine. So let us move on to the next one. See, if, if you are not uh, to the level of understanding, I'm sorry, because it need a basic understanding, you can watch the recording again, right? Okay. So what are the phases involved in the forensic investigation process? Pre-investigation, investigation, post For example, if there is a crime happen, there is a murder, you know, uh, you witness. So what happened? The first thing is, they will say pre-investigation. What are the things we should do it? Before I go to the location, start investigating why the murder will. And also I need to have proper tool, am I right? So if I, if we go to this site where there is an incident murder case, so if I collect the artifacts or the evidences, how do I use that evidence or how do I um, make sure that whatever I collected can be analyzed in the lab? It means I should have a lab, am I right? The forensic lab. So the pre-investigation is nothing but to make sure before you perform a task, you know, um, before you get into the investigation, what are the tasks to be performed prior to engaging in the particular investigation? That is the first thing. Second, you need to have all those labs tools, you know, so that when you go and collect something, you can come and 
do that. So same way in computer forensic, you need to create computer forensic lab. Maybe you need to have a workstation with 16 GB RAM memory, maybe 32, 32 GB memory with a uh, you know, couple of terabytes because you need to dump data, analyze, right? High processor, all of them. Then you need to have tools like uh, different tools to analyze the data. So these are the things which are, so computer forensic lab is one of the main thing in the pre-investigation phase. Then investigation, it's a main phase. So where we do the process and also it involves collecting data, you know, storing it and also analyze that, you know, data to identify what is the source of the crime, where from this crime has happened, you know, who has done, done this, how can I trace to the, um, the, the hacker or cyber criminal. So all of them is part of the main investigation process. So once I found everything that so-and-so has done, it has come from this IP, this is the address. So what is the next step? I have all the evidence now. What is the next step? Then creating a document because now you are going to go to the court or going to go to the uh, police station, whatever it could be. So you need to have a proper documentation. Right, so document all the action taken and then make it as a report so that it could be easily explained, understood, and also it has adequate and acceptable information or evidence. That is the third step. So, this is the phases involved. Let us take one by one and understand. So, what is the pre investigation phase? The pre-investigation phase, what we are going to do, we are going to plan and budget the consideration. For example, I want to set up a forensic lab, computer forensic lab. So it requires instruments, software, hardware, workstation, and also uh, computer-based investigation with regard to the collected evidence. So all of them are required. So it is called CFL. What is CFL? Can you type all of you? Computer. Forensic lab. Okay. So, what is the step involved? So, first of all, you need to understand if I have to set up the lab, for example, if you are going to build a home, what you will do? Can you tell me a process? You'll go and just build it. You'll first of all plan and also say how much it would cost me if I have to build a house. Same way, you want to plan a lab, you plan that how many cases are expected so that uh, whether I need one workstation, maybe whether I need five or 10, depends upon the cases you are going to get uh, at the same time, maybe in the same day, all right? And what, what type of investigation? Um, am I going to do only with computer or I'm going to work with mobile? I'm going to work with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the cloud. Maybe I'm, I'm also able to do, it. now people are storing in the cloud. Then the manpower and equipment and hardware. So you need to list and create a bill of quantity, we call it, you know, bill of material and get a quote and find out how much does it cost. Then ask them, what is the plan to implement when you want to purchase, set up how long it will take. That is one thing. Then if I have to set up, what is the physical structure design? Like lab size, if it's a 10 workspace and maybe it took us, let us say 600 square feet, uh, 400 square feet, you know, if, I, if I'm going to put 20, I need 1,000 square feet. And what are the essential services? Maybe I need to store them in, in a cool area, air condition is required, right? Heating, ventilation, and air condition is something which you calculate. Third one is work area, because you cannot make it congested, right? Some of them has to be in one, one room, has to be a lab, just to store the evidence. Second place should be where you analyze. Third one should be where for your documentation. Fourth one, where you can have a discussion meeting. So you need to find out an ambience, internet, lighting system, you know, U UPS power, all of them. Then physical security, like is anybody coming and going out? They have to sign. Maybe you can put a CCTV camera, fire suppression system, and then human resource consideration. The number of required personal training and certification. It is very, very important. You cannot bring someone who is not knowledgeable about
computer forensic to work with you. You should be at least knowing how to do malware analysis, how to understand the computer structure, mobile structure, cloud, uh, software, how to do, where to look for the uh, you know, binaries, uh, when I install, uh, where I can see the uh, DLL, you know, different uh, dynamic link libraries and other things. So you should be able to understand the software architecture, um, the, com the computer hardware architecture, and how it is integrated, all of them you should know. What is BIOS, what is memory, you know, what is RAM, all of them you should be able to understand so that you will be qualified to conduct this, you know, exercise. Then licensing, sometimes they will ask you, do you have lab accreditation or ISO 17025 accreditation? These are the accreditation so that when you give this certification, when you give this report, the court will accept because you are authorized person to conduct and produce this report. Are you able to follow me this? Very, very important. Not any, anybody can come and create a report and send to the court, the court will accept. No. Are you authorized? Are you accredited to certain bodies? That means they will come and do an audit. ISO means ISO 17025. That means they will come and do audit that are you following the procedures? Is everything is taken care? So is that clear? Can you can you just type the six main point planning and budgeting, physical structure, work area, how it should be, and physical security, human resources, and lab licensing. Can anyone type in the chat box all the six points? Please type. It's, it's good that you repeat certain points so that you, you don't forget. It's done. The, by the way, it's done the screen. It's not going to take much time. Yeah. Quick, quick, quickly, quickly. I want to just, you know, you have to type it so that we can move on to the next one. Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to type. Okay, there are people who start typing, great. So the moment, the moment you take the six point, you know that setting up a forensic lab, what are the things required? So it goes into your mind. Thanks a lot. Yeah, very good. So, okay, let us go to the next one. So building the investigation team, the most important thing is in the investigation process is building an investigation team, all right? Um, so if you are not having a proper team, no matter what, how best you have lab, this is going to be useless. Because I have seen uh, even in universities and colleges and even training centers, they have a wonderful lab with hi-fi, uh, you know, high configuration workstation. But unfortunately, you don't have people who are really capable of, you know, making use of it. So it's very important that you have to have such kind such kind of manpower to work with you, okay? So uh, CFL is computer forensic lab, by the way. So what are the team required? It's something interesting. Can you just imagine and type me in the, in the chat box, wh what do you think that the, in, the, the computer forensic team should look like? Can you just imagine? Let it be interactive. So I don't want to be one side. I want to you know, ask you, what do you think? Who are all the person will be working in the computer forensic lab or in the entire process? Yeah. Can anyone type some 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 names which you think that programmer? Okay, Gautam, that's wonderful. What about others? Okay, programmer, that's okay. Forensic person, okay, Marvin is hacker. Oh, great. Yeah, photographer. I think photographer, evidence collector, evidence analyst. Wow. Okay, security analyst, pen tester, excellent. Yeah. 
Siddharth Krishna, I have been tested. Yeah, cyber investigator, incident responder, lawyer. Wow. Why should I require lawyer? <laughs> Police, why do you need lawyer? Okay. Blue team member. Okay, very good. So I think you, you, I, you guessed most of the people. That's wonderful. So let me get into that. So you need a photographer because if you, if you go to any crime place, I think the police bring the photographer and also he not only photo, uh, take photo also nowadays, they take a complete video recording, right? Then you have incident responder. So respond for message to be taken when an incident occurs, when something happened, how you should respond to that. Okay, response is fine. For example, you need to switch off the computer, and put them into a different zone. It's like when you are infected with COVID, they put you into quarantine zone. Is that right? 14 days. Thank God we have we are not going through that phase. Somebody is telling. Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. No, we are not going through that. All right. Quarantine is the, the, the word which everybody is uh, uh, you know, now head to hear. But Unfortunately, that is the word we use in a in lot in, in forensic. Uh, and uh, because we deal with viruses, uh, antivirus, so when it's something infected, put them in quarantine zone and clean them with the malware, you know, antivirus. And once it's removed, then bring them to the normal location. This is what we have done with the entire last one and a half years with COVID, or two years with the COVID. Right? So, Respond is someone who's going to respond what should be taken and analyze the one who analyzes the incident based on the occurrence. You know, what happened, why it happened. So he has to get, get into the analytic, analytic mode. Okay, that's what this guy will be doing. Analysis. Then we have something called uh, evidence investigators. So, okay, he examined the evidence acquired and sought the useful. Maybe you brought from the site thousands of, maybe thousands of derivatives. Maybe you brought 500 GB of information from memory, from phone. So you need to say what is useful. Maybe you have to say these are the useless information. Maybe out of 500 uh, gigabytes of data you brought, I need only this one GB of data. So he is the one who is going to examine and make sure only useful information are taken. Okay. Then you have documenter to document everything and manager who is someone who is like a supervisor, so our leader, so that he can, uh, he knows that, okay, this information, is it admissible in the court of law or not? You know, or will it be able to use this information to prove the case against him? So this is something like a evidence uh, manager. Then witness, witness is the one, is a, a formal opinion, the form of testimony in the court of law. Like, you know, we, we if you go to the court, if you have attended any pro prosecution, you will find, bring the witness because that's the one who is going to talk about what happened, why it happened. So we need to create the evidence witness. And then finally, somebody has rightly said, lawyer, am I right? We need an attorney who can provide legal advice. So we have to go and discuss with him. Yeah, we collected this uh, memory attack. We found this IP address. We find that this person has, the launch and attack stole this information. We found that there's a data leakage. Sir, how do you think that this is enough to prove a case against him if we go to the court? So as a lawyer, you'll be able to tell this is okay or not, right? So imagine now, I, I think normally we don't imagine in, in, a, in a computer or IT company or forensic computer, digital forensic uh, course to talk about People like lawyer, people like witnesses, right? People like controller or investigator. Why we are talking? Because all related to prosecution, because our objective to take the evidence, document, prove, and go to the court and you know pursue the, the criminal, uh, bring him to the court. So that is our objective. So does it make you know, interesting to understand what, who are all part of investigation team. Just a thumbs up, that's it we create. Just I want to see, you know, something which is new for most of you, right? So you're seeing that, wow, 
cyber investigation i thought maybe only you know programmer there where is the programmer somebody take programmer i could not find no we don't require programmer here all right so incident responder analyzer all of them will take care of it because you are going to use tools okay great so we will have something like a technical lead also part of the team and so they will so understanding the hardware and software requirement that is another important thing we want to set up a lab so what are the things required right for the fun so for hardware like i need to make sure a good processing power ram i cannot go and run a forensic lab with 2 gb of ram sorry even now kids don't use this 2 gb all right even for your mobile you are asking you can i get 32 gb can i get you know 8 gb of 16 gb ram and my storage should be minimum 512 12 gb or 1 terabyte even for the mobile phone people are asking what about investigation so you need to have enough things and specialized cable but because you will be connecting c type u type what are all type has come only god knows right because of so many uh, equipments serial cable uh, you know console cable and then uh, you can you can keep typing rs233 is another cable type hdmi cable so all type of cable should be there and uh, media sterilization system media sterilization means when you bring media maybe it is dirty maybe it is it is corrupt maybe it is having lot of uh, debris maybe loose so you need to have sterilization clean it up so that it can be uh, um, used so you need to have media sterilization system computer funds handbook toolkit such as first report responder bundle deep spare disk imager fred font secure acquisition etc then the operating system you have to have os discovery tool data this is a software you need to install like data discovery tool password cracking tools okay now you become a hacker but we call it as ethical hacker right if you don't find a password you need to crack it and then get into the system so acquisition tool data analyzer recovery for example you lost the data over hard disk you wiped up you know maybe you deleted some files so how do you recover so there is a data recovery tools we'll talk in detail in the coming sessions okay then file conversion tools maybe you want to convert the file from jpg to uh, text text to image image to video you no know, there are so many other things required file conversion tools because they do not keep the in the file in their original ex extension they may be uh, the hackers when they get into the system they may have a text but they will name it as jpg so it looks like an image but actually it is a text so you need to have this kind of tool to convert to make sure that yeah to collect the proper evidence or the uh, data security and utility tools and also computer forensic staff software tools like wirsar access data as ftk etc so we'll talk this in the later session so this is the hardware and software requirement so is it clear now what is required in the computer forensic lab pre investigation phase before i move on it is time yeah we good Yes, great. So that is the first step you have now understood in terms of investigation. Let's get into the actual process now. I am going to go to the location where the the crime has happened, where the murder has happened, where the theft has happened, whatever it could be. I am able to now. I am going to the location and start my actual process. So we are getting into the core of our investigation process. okay great so we need to follow a methodology methodology nothing but a procedure right i i follow this method because that is proven to be you know most effective 
i can do i can go to my home from my school from path 1 path 2 path 3 maybe i have multiple roads but i choose the road 1 because that is where it is optimal it is effective like how google map shows you you know the shortest path the best path same way the investigation methodologies are kept so such a way that if you follow this methodology your process will be very, very your result will be very effective you will be able to get the result you know very accurate well, so first one is what documenting that crime scene using photo then collecting the data searching the data and, and taking over then preserve whatever you you collected and then start taking data from whatever you preserved maybe hard disk you had now take the hard disk you you collected the evidence but you now you will start you know take the data from the hard disk right then analysis case analysis reporting testifying as an expert witness okay, let us take one by one so i'll just run through uh, because of the time so document the electronic crime scene so what we will do it is very important to document because we need to maintain a record of all the forensic investigation process right so what you need to do document the physical crime scene and then also um, document it is of any related or difficult to find electronic components then record the state of computer system when you find the computer system was it locked what is was it uh, easily accessible what or is it damaged was it on off so you need to document that when you going and taking over somebody's computer or laptop or mobile what was the state right so you have to do that then you have to search and seize planning the search and seize initial search go to the scene and search and securing and evaluating the crime scene finally seizing the evidence at the crime scene right so you search for the evidence and seize it you know take the possession then plan it how do you plan as such as is a plan so contain the following details description of the incident what is the description maybe there is a um, cyber attack maybe there is a ransomware attack then you put a case name or a title for the incident ransomware attack on xyz company location of the incident it happened in the data center application applicable jurisdiction and relevant legislation you have to say this has happened in chennai this has happened in chennai so uh, the legislation is at under the uh, chennai high court right determine the extent of authority to search so what is kind of permission i have to go and search right creating chain of custody detail of equipment to be seized what i have to collect only the computer or mobile or the hard disk what i have to do it right approval if it requires some kind of approval i need to go and seek the approval see i am going to search uh, and uh, collect information can i go to the scene and do that and finally health and safety precautions if you are going to someone which is hazardous environment dangerous environment then you need to make sure that you are well protected with uh, you know aprons and maybe uh, full cover maybe you need to have some radio Um, you know if it is radio active environment you have to have proper uh, suit to protect you and all of them are part of health and safety precautions then the evidence once you collect that you know you make you make sure whatever you collect it is free from any contamination you know and also it, you need to isolate secure and you need to transport that all right when you are doing that note down the date and time of transfer in the chain of custody record because this is the time i collected this is the time and date i am sending it to the forensic lab because now you are in the incident location where the murder or thief has happened or where the ransomware attack has happened a cyber attack has happened in our in our case right then procedure used to protect the evidence and document so how you are going to send when you are sending the information or taking the hard disk if somebody can change that So how you are make how you are going to make sure your hard disk you take you have taken from the uh, location is not changed or not deleted that this information is not deleted 
when you are transporting the hard disk to the lab. So you need to say the logbook of the project, tag the uniquely identify any evidence, chain of custody record. These are all very important. Fine. So now then you need to uh, acquisition, means you need to collect the data, process the imaging, collect information, then forensically process and examine the collected data. Then, you know, most critical in digital forensic as improper acquisition. If you, if you are not able to acquire data, later on, you know, you will not be able to prove, you know, in the court. It, they will say it is not admissible. You know, it's inadmissible in the court of law because you are not, uh, you know, collected it properly. Instead of collecting the uh, image, you may collected the text. Instead of collecting the video, you collected something else. So it is very important. You know, you, the when your data acquisition is done, you do it proper. And also verify the accuracy of acqu acqu acquired data because if, if it is not accurate, then also it can put us into trouble. And then once you take data, now you can analyze, am I right? You got to model and create chart, scope of the case claim requirement. So that's where you, you have to create a complete data analytic. Then once you analyze, then you create as a case, possibility of exploring other investigative procedure to gather additional evidence. Yeah, I collected this information, but with this, should I have to also uh, take more information. For example, you went to the scene, cyber attack, you collected the hard disk. Now, somebody is saying that hard disk is enough because there is still some data in the mobile phone. So you have to collect the mobile phone. Somebody is saying, no, no, there is an external hard disk. There is a USB stick. So you need to collect all of them to make sure that you have complete data. And additional information like, you know, email accounts, ISP, what they have used, names, all of them you have to do it. Finally, consider the relevance of comments that are out of the scope of investigation. So if you, are, if, if you collected information, but it is not part of your scope, then you need to remove it. You don't have to keep it with you because that is going to accumulate more and more data for you, right? It is called case analysis. Is it clear now? What are the steps you've done inside the actual investigation? Can you type? Three steps we have used. Anything what you remember now? Are you able to understand now? What are the actual investigation? What are the things happening? Yeah. Type anything. Two, three things. Yeah. Record evidence. Collection time is important. Wonderful. Siddharth, Krishna. What about others? Analyze the evidence, right? Document data acquisition, gather additional information, very good. Then securing the evidence, exactly. Data acquisition, data analysis, you know, case analysis. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, preserving the data, transmitting the data. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm very happy that you are able to follow. So that, that's what is required. Maybe it looks like theory, but it is like a crime investigation. You become now crime <laughs> investigator. You you create like a, you will become James Pond, not not seven at the end of the course. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Fine. Okay. So fundamentally, exactly. You need to know this fundamental so that you, you know, when you are go, doing it, you understand the whole process. So let us get into the next one. What is called post investigation. Now I have done everything. I'll take another 10 minutes and then we'll get into the lab for 15 minutes. Then we'll close the session. Okay. I know that many of you are uh, watching in YouTube as well. Okay. Let us get into now post investigation phase. So pre-investigation, investigation, now post-investigation phase. What are the things involved? Let us see. Okay. The first thing, gathering, organizing information. Yeah, I brought so much information from the site, from the um, uh, location where the crime 
or cyber attack happened, now I need to organize it properly. So identification. So it will help us to you know, decide whether it is appropriate to the investigation and should be organized in specific categories, like procedures, gather all the notes from the different phases, identify the facts, list all the evidence, what you have collected, list the, all the conclusions that need to be in the report, organize and classify the information gathered, to create a concise and accurate report. Because I know that this is what I have collected from here, there, this is related to memory, this is related to the processor, put everything in a proper Excel sheet or a documented so that it will help you to create a concise and accurate report. Then use the data and start now writing the investigation report. So report writing is a crucial stage in, in the outcome of investigation. So the report, what is expected? The report should be very clear. Also concise, not going to multiple pages. pages. And then also it should be written for the appropriate audience. Who is your audience? Maybe your audience most likely. Who's going to be? Not maybe, it will be the judge, maybe the lawyer, maybe the attorney, am I right? So it should accurately define the details of the incident. What happened, when happened. And then it also should convey all the necessary information in a concise manner. It should be also technically sound and understandable so that when somebody reads, you should be able to, uh, okay, there is something, you know, which makes sense, even though I'm not studied, but I can understand what you're talking. So it, it should be able to withstand legal inspection. Somebody tomorrow come and say, you wrote a report saying one, two, three. Can you prove it? You say, no, 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 I don't have the evidence. I wrote because on assumptions, that's it. They will, instead of putting the criminal into, into the jail, they will put the person who wrote the report into the jail. <laughs> so it will be other way around because you, you are trying to give false information. So you have to be very careful. So it should withstand legal. So it's not a joke to write a report. You should have all the documents and everything clear so that it can withstand any legal inspection. And also it should adhere to local laws to be admissible in the court. I think that's something which is, yeah, it should be factual based, exactly. So what, how, it's a template. Maybe you can take a copy of this. Are you have already the book? It is there available. So what should I have? You should have an executive summary like case number, number, names and secure, social number of authors, purpose of investigation, why I'm doing it, what is the significant finding I find, what, how I analyzed, so this is the executive summary, maybe, you know, maybe a quarter page or half page. Then you say, what is the objective of this investigation? One, two, three, the objective of the investigation to, to make sure that, you know, we bring the victim, uh, we, we, we bring the culprit into the court. Right, and take some legal action or to penalize him, you know, ask him to pay penalty or put him behind the bar, whatever it could be. Then, details of the incident one, two, three, time and when it was reported, when it occurred, you know, who are the person who are witnessing. Then, the process what I followed, like date and time of the investigation, who, who did the investigation, and what is the nature of the claim, all of them you can put in there. So you have to have a template like evidence information evaluation, analysis, and other supporting detail and supporting files you should have as part of the template. Then you need to finally testifying as an expert witness. So everything is done. Now it's time to go to the court and present in front of the who? Judge, All right? So present, presenting digital evidence in the court requires, requires you cannot just go on as a, as a cyber forensic investigator, you cannot go on present. Probably you need an attorney. Marriage, you need to know the knowledge of new, specialized, evolving, and sometimes complex technology. It's right? expert witness. Things that take place in the courtroom. What is that? Familiar the familiar is the expert witness with the usual procedure. What is followed in the trial? So they will call your name. You have to go and say and take a word that whatever you are saying is truth. All of them you need to familiarize. Then the attorney introduced the expert witness. Your lawyer will come and say, this is the witness who is going to tell the problem has happened. Then you will be questioned by the opposing counsel. Okay, he might try to 
discredit the expert minister. Say, no, what you are saying is not wrong. How do you, do you can you prove? I know that this not happened. You know, the attorney leads to expert witness through the evidence. You know, then later it is followed by the opposing counsel cross examination. So you will be grilled. This guy who who goes to expert witness, he will be grilled by attorney. Uh, you know, also. the opposing counsel lawyer, am I right? He will also cross examine us. That is what is going to happen. So you should, the guy should know all the process. So hope you enjoyed. Today we talked about what is the, why, the importance of investigation process, process that steps you are going to follow. And pre-investigation, investigation, post-investigation, investigation, and finally we talked about how it will be present to the court. Hope you enjoyed. You understood all the concept. So if you have done that, so let us let me get into the lab. Do you have any questions? Are you able to is it is easy? Is it easy to follow? I just want to understand. Because sometimes people think cyber forensic is you know is very difficult. You know, I, I cannot do it, but I just want to ask you, is something easy? But the more you uh, the lab we do, we start understanding explaining you how you can collect the evidence, integrity check maybe how to run the tool, then you will become expert. God willing, sir. Yeah. Following, sir. Okay, that's good. Able to follow. Very good. What about in, in, in YouTube? Yeah, very good. So can we do some labs? Okay. Are you interested to do a lab? Yeah, let us do that. Okay. Very good. Let me do it. Let me prepare the lab one second. Please also leave your feedback. We are going to share a LinkedIn post. Uh, Tahir, you have the LinkedIn post? Yes. They are. Uh, yes, we can share it in the book. Yeah. yeah, you can share so they can share their feedback. That would be wonderful. Okay. Let me try to. Okay, one second. Let's have a small break. Just I'm downloading the lab. So before we get in. Okay. See yes. Okay, let me share that. So we are going to have three labs, interestingly. So one of them is about how to perform a hash for a file. 
that is to check the integrity of the file. Okay. And then uh, viewing files in various uh, format also we are going to do. Okay. So that's going to be something interesting for you today. Okay. So shall we start? Are you ready? All of you? Session notes, yes. So we have the entire and you can download the book. Probably I'll ask uh, again, target to share in the group. I think maybe some of you have uh, joined recently. Tahir, can you also put it there in the, in the description so people can download that? Okay. okay. And once, so once done, Tahir is going to share you the feedback link so you can provide your feedback in LinkedIn. Okay. Let me see. One minute, people are giving up their mic performing. Okay, that's good. So can you see my screen, all of you? Type, this is the forensic lab. See, this lab is in CyberQ uh, lab in Easy Council. You need to buy, if you want to do by yourself, you need to buy, but these tools are available. You can download from internet and to test it. Right. So some of them are available, but if you want to become, take exams, then you have to uh, buy the lab and also buy the exam voucher, which is not part of my uh, uh, scope. Uh, I can show you some of the lab, you can understand it. Okay, if you want to buy the lab, you can approach uh, Tahir. He can help you get the pricing and, uh, and ask you to get the lab inside the field. So shall we start? Mm, okay, so what is that objective of this lab in the investigation process? Um, as you know that the cyber crime has to, led to development of various laws and standards that yeah, can you share it again uh, it's, digital evidence? it's optimized uh, sorry yeah uh, the clarity is a little bit low so can you yeah okay, okay. stop yes Yeah, now is it better? Yeah, now it's great. Very good. Okay. Fine. So this is the first lab. It's going to be for five minutes. What we are, what is the objective of this lab is to the scenario is what we know that cybercrime you know is increasing. That's everybody you know complains about that. So as an investigator, we need to follow the process which we learned in the theory now. So it, that, and also it has to comply with the local law and established procedure, right? So as digital evidence is fragile in nature, for example, how do you make sure that digital evidence is strong? But unfortunately it is very fragile. Um, so a proper and thorough forensic process, investigation process is required in order to make sure the evidence you collect has the highest integrity. Okay. So as a computer forensic investigator, it is important that you have to have a knowledge of the process involved during the you know, forensic investigation, such as collecting the digital evidence, building the computer forensic labs, and recovering the deleted data extra. Even if they delete, you should be able to recover. Is that is, is something which everybody will look for? Love to do that. Right? So in the lab, what we are going to do? Generating hashes and checksum files, calculating the MD5 value of the selected file, because we are now talking about digital evidence. That means you are talking about a file. The file could be a text or it could be a video, audio, you know, any, any digital evidence. Then we need to calculate the MD5. What is MD5? We'll talk about that. Being files of various formats, maybe they have store the file in, in text or JPEG or video or any other format, creating a disk image file of a hard disk partition. So I want to create a disk image. 
so that I can know what is that. This is what we are going to see in this lab. Fine. Is it clear the objective? All of all of you, the scenario and the objective. Yeah, very good, very good. Thank you. So now let us get into that. So. So forensic investigation, now I'm going to do forensic investigation process. We know that uh, computer lab. So what I'm going to do in this lab one, the scenario is what? I'm going to perform hash or HMAC calculation. Hashing is converting, you know, creating a um, file or creating codes, you know, which will make sure that the file have the same number of codes. So let us see the let us see the scenario. What is the scenario? So you have there is a multi MNC company. They have undergone a cyber attack. So they call for a forensic investigator. So now uh, the, as as you are a forensic investigator now, you went to the site. We went to the company X Y Z. You found some codes. Okay, that found they appear to be familiar and needs to cross check. Of their availability across the malware database. So you find a particular code, but you think that it could be a malware attack. So you want to check it in the virus total or any site which can find if it is an attack or it is a virus or not. But the problem is what? This code you want to copy, it is very huge. Maybe one terabyte, two terabyte, you don't have enough space. So now what you are doing? So you are going to uh, use the hash value of the code so that you can find tra their traces in the database. So I, each file has something called a hash value. If you know the hash value, then you can use the same hash value and go to the um, you know virus total site and upload and find whether it is the same file or not because hashes are going to remain same, okay? So the object used compute hashes of files and texting, check the hashes on a virus total, virus total is the site to see if the files are malicious. Is it clear now for all of you what I'm going to do? I cannot transfer this to TB of data because it's one single file. I, can, I know it's taking time. So I'm going to calculate the hash value, use the hash value and upload to virus total and find is it infected malware, what type of malware, fine. Is that fine? Yeah, you were got cyber attack today. Very good. You are updated. And who attacked? It is. I think it's a 15 year, 16 year old guy. You know, school boy has done that. Mm -hmm. So computer access. Okay, let us get into that. So let us go to ask. So we need to have something called has calculator. It's a tool. So let us install that tool so that we can find out the hash value of a file, okay? Let me get into the lab, real-time production is disabled. So I'm going to go to the Windows 10 machine, okay? I'm getting into the machine, logging in. Now I'm going to install a tool called hash calculator, okay? Go to model two. Has value calculator tool is what I'm going to run. Has calculator, run this tool. Okay. So whoever is going to uh, you know, register and do some, all the assignment properly, you will be sharing at the end some of the tools for you to download from our site, okay? So we'll, we'll monitor your performance, how you are performing, how you are doing. Then these tools you can you know, download even freely from the sites. Okay. Yeah, 18 years old, right? Okay. So let me go and model to, okay. So I'm taking a file. This is the law image file, right? So I'm finding out one file, which is huge. Yeah, what is the file? Fan card, okay. 
data format data. So I'm not able to copy, but I want to calculate the, the hash value of that. Tiger, Panama, okay. And another one. I took the file now because that is the infected file. I suspect now I'm calculating the hash value. Calculate. So it's giving me the MD5 value. Can you see that? All of you? Okay. Test. I'm creating a test. That means I'm generating for even you. It could calculate a lot of them. So, but I'm not interested on that file. I'm interested on the file value. So let me go and say text string is uh, okay. hello. So this is just to say with the hash calculator, you can create a string and uh, create, or you have you can have a file, or you can have a key. So whenever you enter, it is going to create yeah MD5 hash. Okay, that is what we want to explain with the hash calculator. Probably we'll try to share, you can do it. So now let me come and take a folder, go to the folder. This is the infected PDF. Where I'm suspecting there is a virus. So I cannot copy the PDF. So I copy the MD5, copy that. So it's create MD5. Now I'm going to go to the virus total site. Okay, virus total. So, okay, virus total. So, I, yeah, virus total.com. Now, I want to search what I'm going to paste this HMAC, H, you know, the MD5 signature. I'm searching. So, you are not submitting the entire file, but you are only submitting the MD5. And it said, what is the file name? It showed in the top. Did you see that? What is the file name it showed? Can you check that file name? Can anyone type? So I just put the MD5, not upload, exactly infected PDF, which was the MD5, which we created in the actual folder of the PC. Is that right? Yeah, name of the video. Okay, very good. So now, then it's saying the size of the file when it was created, blah, 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 all of them. Then now you see, imagine so what, how many virus it has infected. Saying that version PDF document and what are the virus behavior, virus total, juju box, reduction, you know, it's saying that, okay, process area, okay, process trees. It's saying almost 39 out of 62. So hope you are able to understand now what we have done. Is this lab clear for all of you? Do you like this lab? That how do you investigate? You have you are going to the crime place where cyber attacks happen. You, you cannot copy the file, so you use hash calculator, do the MD5, then take the MD5 signature, go to the virus total. It's a site. Upload. It will tell whether it is actually virus or not. That's it. Very simple. Do you like the lab we have done, all of you? Yeah, good. So can we go to the next one? Are you ready? So let me go to the next one. So we are doing from step by step, basic things, all right? So that when we go on the advanced level, you'll be still enjoying that. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. So now comparing the hash value of file to check the integrity. So now I want to see, I had a file. I want to know whether somebody has modified or not. Okay. So you when you have to check the integrity of the file. So what do you do? You must calculate the hash value of the copies that are suspected to have been modified 
and compare them the original as well of the original file the stored in the organization confidential data for example you have now a cyber attack you know and a file has been changed now you you you, you should have taken backup remember you might have taken a backup in your backup directory in the folder every day maybe they run a backup in an organization they do backup or maybe they have it in the hard disk external hard disk okay so now how do you compare whether it's saying that the same file the files are same are not modified how do you know because if, if they have altered if there is a virus you know how do you know you need to compare the hash value of the file it is there in your disk it need not be even virus maybe they inserted a text am i right they type that hello how are you maybe they wrote something inside so how do you know that the file is same file as we have stored in the uh, data center or in our backup so you need to compare the hash file that means if both of them are same the integrity of the file is maintained so when you are going to the site collecting some file immediately take the you know uh, hash value calculate the hash value put it in the uh, you know notepad when you transport the file it goes to the location again do a check on the hash value both should match that means nobody has changed the file is the objective is clear all of you yeah so i move ahead very good so, so let, let us go to get into the lab wonderful so same thing i'm going to go to the file okay as well it's fine objective is to generate the md5 as value uh, files using md5 calculator that's what we are going to compare the generate as value pre existing as well so let us go to that So let me close it. The same tool I'm going to use. Back, okay. So not the one. It's a MD5 calculator, not hash value. MD5 calculator, another tool. That is for hash, but this one is for MD5. Okay. Okay, it's installed. So now I'm taking any one of the file. Let us say cartoon article dot jpg. There is a jpeg image. I'm calculating md5. So it's giving me the value, Am I right? Md5. Right click and did the md5 calculator. It gave the value. Okay. This is the evidence file. So now I'm going to the uh, image files. Okay. This as is a text. I already copied all of them. So where is that uh, image file? Yeah, kitty dot jpg. Copy that. Kitty. Yeah. So I'm going to copy what I have st stored on this one. Is it the same one? Yeah, it looks like same one. Am I right? It's equal to. no problem so i will have another file which is model dot png these are the hashes i stored when i created the file so let me go to model dot png run md5 calculator compare the value md5 digest oh this is not same not same so it's not showing the equal symbol can you check that are you able to see that first one it showed me equal but here does it show equal symbol are you able to find not so that is how you can compare whether the file is changed or not the integrity file is the integrity of the file is remain same or something changed that's how we can find out okay so let us get into the is it clear so please type so that we can get to the next lab
next one. Third one is going to be more, even more interesting to you because I'm going to find various file formats, all right? So what is the objective? The scenario is, you know, so he reported to you transmission of some unknown files across the company network, am I right? So there is a security breach happened. So he's saying that I do not know the file, some files which is not, I do not be able to find the extension, somebody is doing it. So after in, upon investigation, the investigator found that the attacker had hidden the file format. So he changed the file format or, or hidden the file format in order to confuse you because you do not know it is a JPEG or text because JPEG text or video file, you know, but this file extension, you're not able to find. So what do you do? Investigate, use file viewer to recognize the format and extract its contents that led to the attack. So I'm going to find out how it has happened. So in order to become a forensic expert, you must have sound knowledge on various file viewing tools in the investigation. So it, it, it includes to locate files quickly, view files of different formats, right? So the file format is a layout of file that tells the program how to display its content. So if it is a text notepad, if it is JPEG, you know, graphic viewer, uh, you know, uh, viewer. If it is a video, maybe video player, right? Dog, GIF, JNG, MP3, all of that. So this will help you to perform that. So worry of the lab. So in this lab, you will learn how to examine files of various using file viewer. There is a tool which we are going to install and show you. So real time protection is disabled in Windows 10. Already logged in the server machines. Okay, let us get into the lab. Yeah, form a format we can find out. All of them are good. Okay, let me get into that task. Let me install the tool. First. What is the tool? Computer phone is tool. File viewer. So it's called file view.exe. I need to install. Okay. So after this today, we will be sending you, share your feedback in the LinkedIn. Also we will be sending some kind of Google form to you know, make sure that you can also share it with your friends, okay, to enroll. Because I, I'm sure that such kind of practical things, you know, you, you might not have expected. So now it's installed. It's loading the file. Wow, that's great. I can see the entire hard disk now. All right. So now I'm going to that. So file, I want to open a particular file. Okay. Go to Google disk. Image file. So friends dot image, okay. So yeah, it's showing the file. Getting started with viewing editing, okay. This is the image, okay. Very good. So what I want to do, file properties I'm seeing. It's saying number of bits, image, okay, fine. So now I want to open another file. Okay, going there, finding something called no command. Okay, yeah. So now it's trying to do, but it is not opening because file either is correct or is forcefully changed. So it is, it's showing blank. I'm, I'm trying to play a video, but it's not showing. That means it's something has changed. You got the point? That means this file is not correct. That's what we understood now, DFV. So later on, we will be, you know, we'll, we'll do in model six, in Windows 4 and 6, how to identify such files and the original file format in the later on in the session. 
So we use this view tool to find out what type of file it is. Okay. So now I hope you all enjoyed. You understood these three labs, and I wish you all the best to continue till you. I I hope you will all keep continuing every week to complete the session.